If I had to pick a driver that could have a whole docu-series made about them, it would be Paul Tracy. There's a lot of funny, interesting, and sometimes just weird stories from his roughly 21-year-long IndyCar career, and this is certainly one of them. In 1997, Paul Tracy went from having a championship-winning start to the year to completely laying an egg. From winning races to a string of DNFs, it was a season collapse for the ages, and the tale of two halves. As bad of a year 1997 turned out to be, it was a downside better than 1996, at least from a results perspective. That year was pretty bad for Penske as a whole, as he actually went winless. It was a special kind of dreadful for Tracy, which I won't get into for the sake that'll probably be the subject of a video in the future. I'll just leave it that 1996 was a bad year, but at the beginning of 97, it looked like Tracy was gonna go from zero to hero. Miami was the site of race 1 of the 97 season, and hopes were surprisingly high. The year prior, Tracy was in the catbird seat to win the race, starting from a pole and leading 83 laps before his gearbox scrapped out on him on lap 84. After the speed he showed the year prior, Tracy was one to watch in 97. However, it didn't look too promising after qualifying, as he would start the race in 16th. However, in the race itself, he would pluck his way through the field, lead a total of 5 laps, and eventually finish the race second behind Michael Andretti. After that, Cort would head over to Surfer's Paradise for race number 2, and it would be an interesting race for Tracy. On the lap 41 restart, Tracy, who starred the race in second, and Alex Zanardi, who starred on the pole, were towards the front still. Tracy was restarting second, while Zanardi was in third, with rookie Arndt Meyer in the lead through strategy. Meyer was pretty much dead meat on the restart, as Tracy tried to go for a move into turn 1. However, Tracy would overcook it, hit the inside curb, and cut the course. Tracy was now in the lead, with Zanardi in second. Tracy was still trying to get his bearing straight when Zanardi went for it down the inside of turn 3. He locked up but still pulled the move off, but Tracy got a much better exit. He tried to go for the switchback, but Zanardi tried to cover it off. Tracy still went for it, and the two made contact out of the turn. They were still side by side, and Zanardi was still defending hard when they made contact again. It's such a chaotic series of events that I don't even feel like my description does it justice. So here's what happened in its entirety. As we go green once again, and watch how fast Paul Tracy gets by him, and we'll see if Alex Zanardi is able to do the same. Oh, he doesn't make it easy. Oh, oh Paul Tracy is going to go off the course. Arden Meyer decided he liked leading, and he made it very, very hard for Paul Tracy. And now Paul Tracy is dispensing of some cones he picked up on the way. Perhaps driving with a little anger at the rookie. Art Meyer in his series debut here at Surfer's Paradise. Here comes Zanardi. Zanardi up the inside, and can Paul Tracy oh! respond? Yes, but they lock wheels. This is incredible. Oh, no. I don't know. My, oh, my, oh, my. Zanardi. That was a case of what we used to say when I was a driving instructor of the Red Mist. Tracy would break his suspension and would be out of the race in 19th place, while Zanardi would continue on. It would be these glass cannon antics that would eventually come back to bite Tracy in the ass, but I'll touch on that later. For now, we can get back on track and cover race number 3 of the season in Long Beach. It was here where Tracy really didn't show anything of note. He would start the race in 11th and finish 7th in the first race in 97 where Tracy really didn't show any competitive speed whatsoever. After three races of the 1997 season, Tracy was 6th in points, with just over half the points of championship leader Scott Pruitt. But after this disappointing showing in Long Beach, Tracy would put a clinic on the field. Two weeks after Long Beach, the series would head up to Nazareth, Penske's playground. And for the first time since Laguna Seca in 1994, Tracy would win for Team Penske. He would start from the pole, lead the most amount of laps of anyone at 186 at 225, and score the victory, shooting himself up to third place in the standings in the process. In Rio, Tracy showed decent speed, but not race-winning speed either. He'd qualify for the race in 5th, spin Brian Herta and Roberto Moreno out early on, and on the restart after that incident, Tracy himself would spin out coming out of the last corner. However, Tracy would muscle his way back to the front, and in the final few laps, it was Tracy and Bobby Rahal battling for the lead, with both of them running on fumes at this point. With two laps to go, it was Rahal in the lead, but coming out of 3, Rahal's Ford engine began to sputter. After leading only one lap to that point, Tracy 
Tracy would pass right hall, take the white flag, and then the checkered flag to score a very improbable win. With Michael Andretti losing an engine and Scott Pruitt finishing third, Tracy would take the championship lead. There'd be more celebrations to come two weeks later, as after a duel between himself and Patrick Carpentier, Paul would get the win in the first ever IndyCar race at Gateway. With his third win in a row, Tracy was in the lead of the championship by 18 points. It certainly wasn't a huge gap, but it was still fairly substantial. But there's still a looming feeling of anxiety. This video is about a season collapse, not a championship season. So when is everything gonna hit the fan? Well, from a results perspective, Gateway was really the jump the shark moment. For the rest of the 97 season, Tracy would only score a single top 5. However, the collapse wasn't as apparent at first, with Tracy starting from the pole in Milwaukee and finishing 6th. But after this, Detroit happened. Tracy was supposed to start 12th, but on the morning of the race, he was suffering from muscle spasms and vertigo. After meeting with Dr. Steve Olvey, the call was made for Tracy not to race on Sunday. He had a big enough gap in the championship that Tracy would still leave Belle Isle with a points lead, but this was a critical blow to Tracy's season. With 9 races to go in the 1997 kart season, Tracy had an 8 point lead in the championship, and it was pretty much all downhill from here. Portland and Cleveland were pretty much the exact same race, with Tracy starting 13th and 10th before finishing 7th in the both of them. Tracy was still in the championship lead when the kart series went to Toronto. So earlier in this video, you may remember how I mentioned that Tracy's glass can antics would get him into hot water. Well, that was about to be put on full display in Toronto. Tracy starred 14th and finished 10th, his worst finish of the season. In interviews with local media after the race, Tracy wasn't short on words, calling his car a quote, piece of sh**. Roger Penske certainly wasn't amused by the quote, doubly so considering it came from a guy that's getting paid millions to drive for him. However, the fallout from that quote wouldn't really hit until the season ended. Michigan was a final flash in the pan for 1997, with Tracy finishing the race in fourth. It would be his last top five of the year, and the last race he'd finish at all in 97. It may seem good on paper, but with Alex Zanardi taking the win, it put Tracy out of the championship lead. But the worst was yet to come. After qualifying for the Mid-Ohio race in a dreadful 15th place, Tracy got caught up in a lap 1 schism, giving him terminal suspension damage. Now he was 27 points back as Zanardi, after Alex took another win. Road America would be even worse, with Tracy starting 15th yet again. Rookie Walter Salas started ahead of him, but spun in turn 1. Tracy tried to avoid him by going down the inside, but he would be clipped by Salas. He was briefly on two wheels, before landing back on all four, hitting the tire barrier at a weird angle and subsequently rolling over. It was a crash that, in my opinion, perfectly embodied his 1997 season. After a second DNF in a row, Tracy was now dropped back to third in the points, 47 back as Zanardi. Now in Vancouver, Tracy finally won star in 15th, but instead would star in 17th. For the third week in a row, Tracy would be out of the race after only one lap. This time, it was contact with Raul Bozell, who pinched Tracy into the wall heading into the turn 5 chicane. According to Tracy, he nearly flipped in the accident, but regardless of what happened, he would be out of the race yet again. After a third DNF, Tracy was now 60 points out of the championship lead, mathematically out of championship contention. Laguna Seca would be the first time since Michigan that he would see the end of lap 2, but after starting 12th, he would blow his engine up after only 23 laps. Finally, in Fontana, he would crash after only 13 laps. Tracy would end the year 5th in points, 74 back of the lead. Certainly not terrible, but compared to what could have been, it was very disappointing. So remember how I said that Tracy's quote in Toronto would come back to bite him? Well that story is a tad complicated. Penske ran their own cars back then, and they sucked on the road courses. Tracy was vocal about his disdain for the Penske cars, and told Roger Penske outright that if they want to win, they need to run Reynards. After the season, Tracy and his manager got invited out to San Diego for lunch with some sponsors. This was around about the time when Bill Clinton, the sitting US president at the time, was contemplating a ban of cigarette sponsorships, which would have destroyed Penske's budget, which was almost entirely bankrolled by Marlboro at this time. Tracy and his manager get to the hotel, go where they told him to go, and then 10 minutes later, Tracy walks out of the hotel without a job. Team Penske straight up fired Paul Tracy just because he didn't like the Penske chassis. Now to categorize how quickly things fell apart, let's just pick three moments from 1997. In May, Tracy was on a three-race winning streak, led the championship, and was pretty much on top of the world. By the end of July, he was out of the lead, and by the end of the year, he was out of a job. 
Penske would stick with their home-built chassis all the way through 1999, and Tracy's win at Gateway in 97 would end up being Team Penske's last win of the 90s. Tracy's 1997 season was a total fever dream, so much in fact that I'm not even sure this video did it justice. Thank you for watching, and have a great afternoon.